The final video will explain how to view the results with the post-processing software Paraview. Paraview is open source and can be downloaded from their website. The newest version is sufficient. So, looking for the executable, I will open up Paraview. Then, we'll begin by opening up the results for the standard mesh. We need to navigate to where the results were saved. As we see, we have info or the saved files for the templates. Inside the multi-block folder, we have all of the multi-block results. In the result folder, pair of view uh, results are saved to the file with the extension VTM. VTM has all time steps or all iterations. Then you can look inside a specific time step if so. For now, we'll look at the entire results, so the, the base VTM file. Click OK to open and load the results. Also, click Apply. From the colors, we can color by pressure, where EMBI stands for embedded interface and negative values are for the fluid and positive values for the solid where the red zone is our cylinder and the blue zone is our fluid. The interface is zero. So one thing we can do to further look at the results is clip. With the clip tool, we can clip on a plane, box, sphere, but in this instance, we'll look at scalar. Scalar by EMBI for the solid and at the interface, look at zero. Apply to update. Then we've cut out the um, negative values, so we only are looking at the fluid. If I recolor now, scale, our scale goes from 0 to minus 2. On the other hand, we can color it back to pressure. Keep in mind, we're also looking at only the initial conditions. If I step forward to the last time step and rescale again, we get the final results. Here we get the nice pattern from the um, vortex shedding. With the color map tool and the favorite presets, we could change to a more typical blue to red rainbow color scheme. Also, we can apply a calculator function to our clip. This calculator we'll use to cal calculate the velocity magnitude. Such a calculation we'll do in 2D by multiplying the U scalar by the, the um, unit vector in the I direction plus the V velocity scalar times the uh, unit vector in the J direction. Clicking apply, we now have our calculator visible and we can color the results by velocity magnitude. Again, for this new item in the pipeline browser, we could add back a blue to red rainbow scheme. Then what's usually interesting is to add uh, vectors based on the velocity magnitude. For the glyph type, we'll do a 2D glyph, scalars as none, vectors as velocity magnitude and scalar mode as vector then apply our vectors are too small so we'll increase the size sufficiently then color them by solid color as white while this is interesting we also want to know how does this compare to the BMR mesh. So let's load those results in alongside the standard mesh. Navigating up, we load the BMR. Again, the VTM file. And apply to load it in. However, we've put it on top of the other results. So we'll need an additional filter. All filters can be found in the filters tab and can be sorted alphabetically we'll look for the transformation or transform filter 
and ensuring. Previously, we had selected the new results, and our transform filter is applying to the, old, the BMR results, transform by translating it away. For example, we could move it up in the y direction, trying 12 or a bit more. Then apply to view the new transform. We can again color based on the various things we want, including we have a new variable about the BMR information. Let's make a calculator again. To save some work, we can copy the inputs from the old calculator. And now we also have our velocity mag magnitude calculation and click apply. Let's do the same to add a glyph to the new results and copy from the previous glyph and apply. We still need to change the color and we should change the coloring of the calculator. Now as we see we have an arrow um, velocity magnitude results at each cell point as the information is point data. Then it's very obvious to see where the BMR has overall a coarser mesh except for the refinement zone around the cylinder. You do notice we forgot to put a clip for our EMBI. When I add this back in, I can take my calculator and change the input to the added clip. Now I've clipped out the solid surface. Again, I can use the eyes to hide the different results, keeping just the calculator and glyphs visible. Another way to compare the mesh is to change the view type from surface to surface with edges for each of the calculators. Now we have lines representing the mesh. As you can see, we again have the coarse mesh represented in the BMR with the BMR refinement zone near the cylinder, whereas the standard mesh is overall coarse with a block refinement automatically applied near the objects. 